Okay, so we're going to go over how to use the CAN-based programming cable uh, that connects to the USB device and then to the laptop. So lay down on the desk, uh, we've got a CS2, uh, one of the older production units. Uh, this cable that's got the engine connector on one end, uh, this cable's got two CAN-Ts in the middle, and then it's got an OBD-style connector on the other end. The cable you may have may be a little, maybe a little bit different, might be a little bit simpler looking, but this is the one we're using here at the shop. Uh, and then you have the ODB link device, um, which has got USB on one end, and it's got the other uh, male end of the OBD plug on the other. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just plug these two together. That plugs together just like that. This plug here goes into the engine, the engine connector on the CS2. You can see this CS2 has actually got a display hooked up to it. Uh, you don't actually have to have a display hooked up, doesn't really matter. And this one isn't in a car, it's actually hooked up to a power supply on our bench here. Uh, but you could program this in the car just the same. Obviously the unit has to be powered on for this, for this to work. So once I've got this connected, I just plug the, plug the USB in. And then I can start the application on the, on the computer to get that going. One of the things we need to do before we actually use the cable and reprogram our CS2 is make sure that our drivers have installed correctly and that the settings are right. So I'm going to go into computer management and go to device manager and I'm going to find the COM port for this thing and the thing you want to check out on this is that the in the advanced settings that the latency timer is set to 1 and the minimum read timeout and the minimum write timeout are both set to zero and that the serial enumerator here is unchecked. So we'll close that up, close that up, close that up. Now I'm going to go into the HDM utils folder and here's my HDM flash tool. So I'm going to double click that to start and the flash tool is going to start now I can make sure that uh, this is actually connected correctly to the CS2 by clicking open and you can see I can click this button that says reset uh, target and the little dialog box will come up and say reset complete. Uh, now if the CS2 isn't connected, so I'm going to unplug the connector and I click reset, it'll say failed timeout. So you know that your CS2 is connected correctly when you do the reset and you see this reset complete. So no problem there. So now I'm going to load the program. I'll go File, Open, and I left a copy of a program on the desktop. So I'll pick that one. That's actually the code that we're uh, currently shipping. I click Open, and it's real simple. I just click Start, uh, and it automatically starts to reflash the controller. Uh, now the reflash process takes about two minutes, so I'm going to pause the video capture while that's going on and resume when this uh, bar here along the way is mostly done and we'll pick up from there. We'll just wait till this is finished here and you can see this one's done it says programming complete and at this point if you were to look at the uh, light and display on the CS2 you'd see that it was actually running the uh, code that we had just loaded at which point you can set up and uh, use any of the standard programming tools to complete the setup and configuration. At this point, you can close the interface and close the program because you're done. Of course, if you had another another CS2 to program, you could just uh, open again and start programming again with that uh, that same file already loaded.